Here we go. Uh, popular, pretty, famous, like, comment, subscribe, Twitch, here, VTuber. What do you got for me? This thing's broken. Roll the tape. A while back, I did a video about art on the internet, and because everything is always happening so much, well, here we are again. In the months since I spent 20 odd minutes talking about how a urinal changed my life for the better, AI art has become a divisive topic to say the least. At first, I thought this was just a funny way to imagine what Dune would be like if all of the characters were replaced with Muppets, but the technology and the discourse around AI art have advanced rapidly since then. If you've got no idea what I'm talking about, here's a quick crash course. AI art is a branch of machine learning, and while that sounds very fancy, you're probably already familiar with it if you've ever had to solve a CAPTCHA puzzle to prove that you are a human. Via the invention of the computer, we have allowed sand to think, but it turns out that sand doesn't think very well by itself. So when you're solving those puzzles, what you're really doing is helping to teach a machine how to identify different things in a picture. AI art builds on this and takes it a step further, because not only are you teaching a program how to identify different patterns, but you can also then query it to produce a new image based on the prompts that you fed into it. Now, proponents of AI art would tell you that this is an improvement and in, in the accessibility of art. As long as somebody can just put to words whatever their mental image is, they can produce a piece approximating it without needing to put in years of time learning how to do art. And for existing artists, they can also use it as a tool to create references for their own novel works. See, it's got, it's got something for everybody. Critics, of which I am one, point out how these models have to be trained on existing art, and that oftentimes they are trained on existing art that is taken without the artist's awareness, consent, or importantly, compensation. In some cases, it even happens posthumously, such as with the case of Master Kim Jong-ji. His body of work was fed into a machine learning tool without the consent of his estate shortly after his death. The goal was to create a tool that could be used to reproduce works in his style after his death. Basically, it's an impressively less ethical form of hologram Tupac. Personally, I'm of the mind that there can be no ethical application of a technology that relies on the exploitation of creative labor. Imagine my surprise when people started showing up at artist alleys and conventions with booths full of pieces that had been produced by AI that was trained on stolen art and then sold for their own personal profit. That argument about accessibility has never really made sense to me, and even less so when AI users will flip it around and accuse their critics of gatekeeping artistic expression. Now, last I checked, you can always just pick up a pencil and a paper and do an art. The police can't even arrest you for it. But it finally made sense to me when I came across this tweet that peeled back some of those layers to get to what is the real appeal of AI generators. Art is hard, and people don't want to be potentially embarrassed by being bad at something. And then came this other tweet that came across my timeline and laid that all out in just plain language. I'm going to paraphrase a bit, but it basically boils down to, I'm never going to be better than the machine, so why would I even bother trying to get better? Look, I get it. I have struggled with perfectionism and self-criticism for most of my life. There's probably even a past version of me who would agree with that. However, reading this as the person that I am now makes me sad. And I want to tug a little bit at this and trace this line of thinking because I feel like it's coming from a tragic misunderstanding of what it is to make art and why people do it. There are a lot of different angles to take here, but I want to start looking at the idea that both art and artists are either good or bad. In that tweet, the poster says that they are always going to be worse than the machine, so why even bother? They don't want to just make art. They want to make art of a particular standard. Maybe that standard is something that they've set for themselves, or maybe they're looking at some kind of outside metric, like Twitter likes, or Instagram likes, or Mastodon toots, I think that's what they call them, whatever. It doesn't really matter, and it doesn't really matter where they're coming from either. If they cannot reach that standard, 
then whatever they make is going to go into the box with the, all the rest of the bad art, and nobody wants to see their work end up there. And again, I get it. If you plan on sharing whatever it is you make, it takes real guts to put it out there knowing that it isn't great, especially in a world where professional illustrators and experienced artists are dropping what are, to me, amazing pieces every day and then calling them scribbles. And if those are just scribbles to them, well then what does that make whatever I just put out there? But letting an outside standard like that determine whether what you've made is good or bad is letting yourself see art as something that exists only to be consumed, liked, and moved on from. And that's just capitalism talking. And if you've watched any of my other videos, you already know the line. The focus on art as an outcome also misses something important. Art isn't just the picture or the song that you share. Art is an activity. Art is something that you do. Everything you have done prior to the piece someone is looking at right now, and everything you do after it is your art. Every piece is a link in a chain that depends on every other piece. They're all part of the same process. I might be a novice artist. After all, you've been watching me draw a hand for most of this video, so you've probably figured that out. But I am pretty good at fighting games, and there's a parallel conversation here. Over the years, I've noticed that beginner and intermediate players tend to focus on specific outcomes, like placing at a tournament or whether or not they won a particular set, to determine whether or not they are good or bad. It's pretty similar to how some people talk about art. You either go into one box, you are good or you are bad. And not too long ago, I joined a Discord and I saw some players asking how someone might know when they've become an advanced player. And of course, all the people in that Discord that would probably be considered advanced players had no idea how to answer. The best answer that I could come up with at the time was, you know that you're an advanced player when you stop caring about whether or not you're an advanced player. And kudos to pass me on that one, it sounds really profound. There really isn't a hard line between a beginner, an intermediate, or an advanced player. We're all just learning at our own speed. Some of the strongest players that I've met would be the first people to tell you that they think that they suck. However, where they differ is that they aren't comparing themselves to an outside standard, they're just aware of how high the skill cap of their given game can get, and how far they are from getting there. So saying that they suck is really just curt shorthand for saying something more like, I'm not really thinking about where I am right now, I'm thinking about how much better I can still get. Those same players also tend to not focus on specific outcomes. If they lose a set or they drop a combo, they don't put themselves in the bad player box, they just write it off as learning and they move on. Bringing it back to art, if you make a piece that you aren't happy with, you don't have to call yourself a bad artist, you're just learning. And focusing on that one piece and making it into more than it really is, is doing yourself a disservice. There is another angle here that I want to touch on. And yes, it is true that being quote unquote bad at something does not feel good. However, those feelings are still important. When Bennett Foti made the greatest game of all time, getting over it with Bennett Foti, he stuck a C.S. Lewis quote into the game, and I think about it often. It goes a little something like this. The pain I feel now is the happiness I had before. That's the deal. The joy of overcoming your limitations cannot happen without the frustration of finding out your limitations in the first place. Making things can be frustrating and thrilling, but you cannot have one without the other. To avoid learning a skill because you're worried about frustration or embarrassment is also denying yourself the joy that comes from learning. In the past couple of months, I've put a lot of effort into art and music, specifically trying to learn guitar. These are two things that I've always wanted to do, but I've avoided sitting down and doing because I didn't want to be bad at something. And whether it's been sitting down and playing the same part of a song over and over again, or struggling to draw the incomprehensible eldritch visage of a human hand, it's been frustrating. Take these three pieces for example. When Bridget dropped in Guilty Gear's Drive, the Twitter tags for the character were full of art from both experts and amateurs. And seeing people share their joy in their process, regardless of whether or not they are quote-unquote good or bad, was a big factor in getting me to try art again. 
And yeah, the first one isn't great. I made it by following along with a pretty basic tutorial in Clip Studio Paint. And then you can see that the second piece builds on that. And then the third piece I was really proud of. It was really excited to share it even. But lately, when I do sit down and put pen to tablet, I find myself really frustrated. I have my references together, I know what pose I want to draw, but nothing seems to come out right. The lines look weird, and the colors are off, and I just end up deleting everything and starting over. I could give up, but I know that eventually I'll figure it out if I keep at it. It's all just part of a bigger process. The frustration that I feel now is the joy that I will feel later. That's the deal. And that's what makes me so sad about this perspective on AI art. Focusing on instant gratification for fear of being bad at something misses the whole point of what makes art meaningful, the joy and frustration that comes from that process of learning. I used to tell myself that it was okay to be bad at things, to cope with moments where I was frustrated. But especially in the last couple of months, I think I've come around to something else. It's not just okay to be bad, it might even be good to be bad, actually. Learning that lesson has been one of the most fulfilling parts of this past year for me, so it feels fitting to make it the point of the last video that I make in 2022. I want to end on a letter that Kurt Vonnegut wrote in response to a high school class that wrote to him. I thank you for your friendly letters. You sure know how to cheer up a really old geezer in his sunset years. I don't make public appearances anymore because I now resemble nothing so much as an iguana. What I had to say, moreover, would not take long. To wit, practice any art, music, singing, dancing, acting, drawing, painting, sculpting, poetry, fiction, essays, reportage, no matter how well or badly. Not to get money and fame, but to experience becoming. To find out what's inside you. To make your soul grow. Seriously, I mean starting now. Do art and do it for the rest of your lives. Draw funny or nice picture of Miss Lockwood and give it to her. Dance home after school. And sing in the shower and on and on. Make a face in your mashed potatoes. Pretend you're Count Dracula. Here's an assignment for tonight, and I hope Miss Lockwood will flunk you if you don't do it. Write a six-line poem about anything but rhymed. No fair tennis without a net. Make it as good as you possibly can, but don't tell anybody what you're doing. Don't show it or recite it to anybody. Not even your girlfriend or parents or whatever, or Miss Lockwood, okay? Tear it up into teeny weeny pieces and discard them into widely separated trash receptacles. You will find that you have already been gloriously rewarded for your poem. You have experienced becoming, learned a lot more about what's inside you, and you have made your soul grow. God bless you all, Kurt Vonnegut. Well, that's what I got for this time. Until next year, remember to be nice to yourself, or the Padiru living in your walls will find you and compliment you.